Hello everyone, this is Robert. And this is Luke. And today we're gonna to be cutting out robot feet for Pepe Sylvia. Let's do it. So Pepe Sylvia uses UHMW for its shuffler feet. The shuffler has a cam system that goes up and down and that allows the robot to get this kind of walking locomotion. And the reason why we're using UHMW is because it's lightweight, it's flexible, and in this case, the most important thing is it's slippery. So we can use the UHMW slipperiness to avoid using any kind of bushings or bearings that weigh a lot and add up to weight that we don't want to use. So let's go ahead and cut it out. I've cut UHMW several times on my channel and I have a little bit of experience with it. Generally speaking, you want a relatively low RPM and a high feed rate. The Avid CNC is, has a minimum of about 10,000 RPM, so we have to go really fast in the feed rate to compensate that, but thankfully it can move pretty fast. We're gonna be cutting 24 of these feet out of a solid block of 36 by 36 inch UHMW, and yeah, we'll get about 24 out of those, which is enough for two robots. So even though there are a total of 24 feet, I kind of split these off into sections of four. So we're gonna be cutting four at a time, just in case anything goes wrong, we're not wasting a lot of material or we don't have to waste an entire row of these. We can do four at a time, jog the machine over, do another four, go down a row, and then you know kind of repeat that all the way through the entirety of the material. One of the things with UHMW is what makes it really great is also what makes it very difficult to hold down for machining. It is very kind of chewy and gummy and flexible, and it's also extremely slippery. So clamping UHMW is kind of out of the question. It's too slippery to clamp, and if you clamp into it, it will just kind of deform. So the best way to do this is just screw it down to the spoil board. So you can see I got this screwed down, and these screws are very strategically placed. I'll show this in a later portion of this video, but I laser cut this little cardboard template that I can just lay down on the UHMW and it will mark out these screw locations so that we don't end up just uh, machining into the screws. These screws are far enough away from the actual tool paths. We know we're not gonna hit them and that's what the template is for. So Pepe has a lot of custom machine parts. Uh, I think we had hundreds of custom machine parts to build this robot. And the feet were particularly tricky for their cost alone. It turns out that to make 25 feet, we got about $65 per foot. That ended up being $1,500 worth of feet. And you only really paid me 50 bucks? And that's why we're here at Robert's house. One of the nice things about making your own parts in your own shop is you can kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. For instance, the quote that Luke was talking about with the machine shop, they're most likely taking a larger block of UHMW, facing it down, making sure that that thickness is exactly where it needs to be. And then, you know, maybe making some fixtures, maybe doing two sides of it, cutting them out from the back, all sorts of good stuff. We don't really need to do any of that because, you know, we can put in a little bit of manual labor in the end of it. We also know that this UHMW is relatively consistent in the thickness. It's well within the tolerance of what Luke needs, so not a big deal. So we're not facing it down. And then also we're not really optimizing the tool path because we're only making 24 of these. And you know, time for us isn't as expensive as it might be for a commercial machine shop. So we're doing everything just with a single quarter inch bit. We could come in with a half inch bit, rough out more material, do that a lot quicker, then come in with the quarter inch and clean up all the edges and hit the radiuses we need but I ended up just doing a quarter inch for everything. It takes a little bit longer, but we also don't have to mess with any tool changes. We don't have to have a separate bit on hand. We can just basically jog the machine over, hit go, do another four, jog it, and we don't have to recenter the tool, none of that good stuff. So it worked out well for us. Speaking of cycle times, we ended up getting these down to about 20 minutes for four feet. So that was about five minutes a foot, which really isn't too bad. There's a fair amount of material to remove from these. The um, dust collector was full. It was absolutely full by the end of this. There was a ton of chips left over by this um, whole process. But yeah, 20 minutes was not bad. So we did that in six different sections. So eh, do the math. 
three hours worth of cutting total, and really the setup in between each batch of four really wasn't that bad. So yeah, we could have maybe got this down to 10 or 15 minutes, but in the long run, it really didn't save us that much time. So it was nice going a little bit more conservative and not having to mess with changing out the tool. So here's a better look at that cardboard template I talked about. It just has a faint outline of the actual parts laser cut in it, and then hole locations for the screws. So we're just taping that on to the location that we're going to be cutting, drilling through the template, drilling through the HMW into the spoil board, and then adding the screws. You can see that this whole thing is flipped 180 degrees. We got two full rows cut, and we flipped it just because I have the aluminum T-track at the bottom bottom of my bed. I didn't want to cut through that. So we just flipped it around so that we're cutting through the spoil board once again. And then we're leaving a nice little strip of usable UHMW at the top. So pretty simple stuff. So now that we have all the parts cut out, it's just a relatively simple matter of sending Luke home to cut out each one of these individually. Unfortunately, with the cam package I'm using, I don't have the option to do tabs, so it's gonna be a little bit more work on Luke, but there's just kind of like an onion skin, just a really thin membrane on some of these, so he just kind of has to cut these out and do the finished processing. So yeah, the, the parts are done. They look amazing. Can't thank Robert enough. Uh, it was a long mm. day of work, uh, but parts look amazing, and I expect these to last hopefully a few events, but combat robots, you never know. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.